What's up, everybody? Welcome to Mastering Diabetes and I'm La Green Live. My name is Corey. You know me. I'm here with you every single week. We got a new face I'm going to tell you about in just a second. But before I do, I have to introduce the two men of the hour, Cyrus Kambata, Robbie Barbaro. You guys, these are New York Times bestselling authors of the book Mastering Diabetes, which is coming out on paperback very soon. So stay tuned for that. But listen, we are here today because we are talking to a very special guest. You can see Stephen down there. I'm going to leave because I'm your hype man, guys. I'm the hype man. I'm here to bring the energy. <laughs> no and then I'm going to leave. I'm going to throw it to Cyrus because, look, this is a party for three. I, I am invited, but I'm not going to stay. I'm going to leave early. It's called ghosting, right? That's what it is. Like you ghost the party. <laughs> I'm, but I'm letting you know. So I'm not really ghosting. I'm, just, I'm letting you know. So Cyrus, take it from here. It's great to see you guys. Of course, Paula's here. Let us know where you're watching from, everybody. This is a big show because if you have anybody in your life that is questioning this whole food plant-based diet, if you have anybody in your life that wonders how they can reverse and work on some of the things that they have going on in their life that are causing pain, then look no further than this show. So Cyrus, with that, it's all yours, my friend. Greatest hype man of all time. Thank you, Corey. You're, you're a stud, but perhaps not as big of a stud as Steven Page. Steven, how are you today? What's happening, man? We're doing awesome. How are y'all? Uh, <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So the reason why I wanted to have you on the show today is because we've been doing these Facebook Lives now for you know the better part of a year. And, uh, you know, I've seen you in the background. I've seen your name pop up over and over again, very active. And I could tell from the comments that you were leaving that you had a very large transition in your life. You talked about yeah. dropping your fasting blood glucose by over a hundred points. You talked about losing a significant amount of weight. You talked about being a drug addict in the past and having a, uh, even having been sober since 2017. And as you were saying these things, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what, what's going on here? Like, I think there's a big story to talk about. And I think you had even mentioned in one of the comments here that you had been at some time in your past 300 pounds and diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, but you made a significant transition and changed your life drastically. So I was like, wait a minute, I got to get this Steven guy on the show. I want to talk to him. I really want to learn his whole story because you can tell your story way better than I can. So that being said, talk to us. Give us a little introduction here into what the problem was before you decided to make a train a transition to a plant strong diet. So, uh, first off, I appreciate y'all having me on. Uh, this is really, really huge for me. I'm a huge fan. So great. Um, love it. Everything that y'all do and the research that y'all have done, I'm big into research and that's kind of where this started for me. Um, I was really, really unhealthy. I have been for years, as you said, time and time again, both of y'all have, um, is type two diabetes. Isn't something you just get overnight. Um, it, it builds over time, over time, over time, over time. You sit there and you, and you don't do anything about it over and over and over. And finally, my blood work came back a few months back uh, in May and showed that I had a significant A1C. Uh, my A1C went from, I want to say, 7.2 to a 10.7. Um, and I had lost a lot. I, I was, you know, prior to that, I was well into the 300 pound range. And I had gotten to the point where I was just miserable, but I started losing weight. I started what I thought was eating better, but I really wasn't. Um, and I was losing weight and I thought I was doing something that was right. But uh, I go to the doctor and come to find out I wasn't losing my weight because of eating healthier. I was losing weight because my body was getting really, really bad, really, really fast. And uh, my liver was uh, near failure point. And, you know, soon after that, once your liver goes, everybody knows everything else goes with it. And uh, give me an idea here. You said, you know, thought I was eating healthy in air quotes. What does that mean? What were you actually eating at that time? So, you know, I've done I've done the, the keto diet. I've, I've had to deal with the keto flu before, which is nonsense, in my opinion. Um, I've done, you know, the I guess you could, I don't even know if there's a, a, a term for it, but the sporadic healthy eating where you're like, you eat, you know, healthy and salads for a few days and then you go back and you have some pizza, but Hey, it, it's a cheat day, you know, but you know, cheat days lead to cheat weeks and cheat weeks, to cheat months. And that all leads to type two diabetes and insulin resistance and everything that comes with that. Um, so it's, it's uh, I, I think I call it the, the ADHD. It's the attention 
deficit, hyperactivity, dieting that just goes up and down and up and down and up and down. You can't decide to, you know, make a choice and stick with it. Yeah. And the issue is we try to pick a diet that is simple, simply unattainable to, to stay with. Um, you know, starving your body of carbs just doesn't work long term. And that's where my issue was, is I was trying to starve my body of carbs. And um, I worked at two different butchers, actually. So I ate a lot of beef. I actually own a barbecue company as well. Um, and so, like, beef is what's for dinner. Like, that was my motto, literally. And, like, there is, there is the days, like, we would get together and we would literally eat beef all day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Beef all day. Like we did that, we did, we did meals where it was like all meats, no sides. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, nothing but meats. And after I started watching different documentaries and watching y'all watching, um, Dr. Barnard, Dr. Will Bolshewitz and all these different awesome people that have really taught me so much. I started to learn what was really happening inside my body and how it works. Like I, I knew the AMP, I, I've taken AMP one and two. I knew, I know how the body works but not the nutrition side. Uh, and once I started listening to you guys and several others, like I was uh, saying, I really started learning how what we take in affects our body. And whenever I did, it was literally life-changing for me. And uh, June 15th of this year, um, in the middle of the night in Missouri, I was uh, taking uh, some semi-loads back and forth to North Dakota. I was laying in my truck and I was like, that's it, I'm done. And I'm going plant-based that night. I, uh, as uh, me and Corey were talking yesterday, I went cold kale, like literally uh -huh. cold overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And uh, and that was it. It, it was uh, it was life changing. The first couple of days, I'm not gonna lie. The first couple of days were kind of uh, were kind of I wouldn't say rough, but they're just kind of eh. You know, because my body was just trying to all of a sudden I'm starting to put fiber in and I'm getting all the healthy stuff in and all the bad stuff trying to come out. And, uh, but after that day three and on, it was utterly life changing. Steven, um, I, I want to take one step back here real quick. So you're saying you, you own a barbecue company. Okay. And so I like this because you have the, the discipline or the, the, the commitment to even in that, that environment where that food is in front of you, it's available all the time. You decide, you know what, that's not for me. I, I how did you make that shift? So during my summer, I've been really, I, I have two jobs. I have a full-time job, which is where I'm at actually right now. I'm actually literally sitting in the sleeper of my semi is where I'm at right now. Um, talking to you guys. I'm in Tallahassee right now. I just got up picking up a load of hurricane supplies that are going down to South Florida. Cool. Um, and so, but um, whenever I'm home, we do like catering jobs and stuff like that. And we're hoping to open our food trailer next year. Um, but I have had jobs where, you know, I had to cook barbecue and don't get me wrong. I love it. But our bodies, once you start to feed your body healthy in the, in the way that it was meant to be fed and the nutrition, it was meant to be fed. It's not that you don't crave it. Like I do look at the barbecue and I'm like, man, that, that looks really, really good. And, and, and I'd love to be able to have that taste again, but it's not so much where I'm like, oh my God, I've got to have it. You know, it doesn't drive me over that point. I don't, I don't, um, I don't have to have it. Um, but then our last catering job that we just did a couple of weeks ago, I got like a whole head of cauliflower, a whole head of broccoli. I got some cabbage and cut cabbage steaks and put everything on the smoker and smoked it and made plant barbecue. And it was amazing. We did sweet potato, which I've been doing sweet potatoes for a while because sweet potatoes cooked like that are just on a different level. They're amazing. Um, right. And, and so um, you can still enjoy it, but now I have a palate for vegetables because I love them. I've, I've gotten to the point where I, whenever I'm at home, my wife will steam me vegetables and we no longer even season it. Like no salt, no pepper, no nothing, no seasoning at all. Just straight vegetables steamed with water. That's it. And it tastes great. Um, I was out to dinner with my men's group from our church. And we went to a restaurant, which is a steakhouse. And, you know, they were all kind of uh, poking at me, you know, what, what are you going to eat here? Well, you know, I pull up my bag and I'm like, I brought it, I brought it to go lunch with me because <laughs> I went shopping beforehand and just brought my food with me. But the place we were eating at actually had um, unseasoned steamed broccoli as their 
vegetable of the night or vegetable of the day or whatever. And that was the first time I had completely unseasoned vegetables, and it was amazing because my palate has now changed. Um, and I can actually taste what food tastes is supposed to taste like now. Right, right, right. It's a completely different experience. So let's, let's talk about how quickly you saw improvements in your blood glucose and body weight, because, uh, I, from, from what I've been told here and from what, what, what we've been learning from you is that you used to be taking between 10 and 15 different medications per day. And you went from that to zero medications per day in a short period of time. So can you kind of give us some insight here into what was the pharmaceutical regimen you used to be on and what changed? So, um, as a type two diabetic, I started out like many people do on a 750 milligram dose of metformin. That's usually pretty much the first thing that you go on. Um, uh, most doctors at that point will also want to start you on some type of blood pressure medication, usually what my doctor called a baby dose, um, which was just like 25 milligrams of losartan. Uh, he also started me on a small dose of rosuvastatin. Uh, which anybody knows is statin, that's a cholesterol medication. Correct. Uh, and statin is actually pretty pretty uh, awful for the body. And um, come to find out. And so I started on just those um, like two years ago. Um, and then as it progressed and got worse and the fat infiltrates became more and more and more in my muscle tissue and in my liver tissue, I went and did um, what's called a fiber scan. I'm sure that you've probably heard of that before. I think I've heard you talk about them before, but I had a, what's called a fibro scan, which is where they kind of do like an ultrasound type deal of your liver. And they check the stiffness of your liver. They check the scarring in your liver. And same story, it was progressively getting worse. And so my doctor, as it got worse, up my medications, switched me to a metformin with impagliflozin, which is a Sinjardi medication. Um, it's, it's just a bigger pill. It's just a combination pill. Um, got me on a bigger dose of the cholesterol meds, bigger dose of the blood pressure meds. And um, then, of course, I was taking um, countless. Uh, I was up to about 10 potassium pills a day because my body was having horrible, horrible cramps. Um, there was nights where my wife would, we have one of those, um, like a uh, massager deals with the ball on the end of it, you know? Yeah. And, and she would have to sit there and like through pain, like work my legs out to where they wouldn't hurt anymore. And I would have these knots the size of baseballs in my legs. Yeah. I've and, been there. And so I got to the point where I was just like, something's got to give. like, I'm, I'm literally tired of hurting. It's not just the, it's not the, the loss of the energy. It's not just the fatigue. It's not just being tired all the time. It's not just being lazy. I mean, it makes you lazy. It 100% made me lazy. And I was just sick and tired of it. I didn't want to live like that anymore. And um, my father passed away in 2019. He had had um, numerous health problems that stemmed from um, injuries to his lungs that he sustained during the Vietnam War, but he ended up actually passing away of a heart attack. And I just kept on thinking about that. And I was like, you don't have to have a heart attack. You know, there's very, very few, I've, I've done the research, there's very few cases in which a heart attack is caused by something other than diet. I mean, it's a very short list, very short list. And, but there's a long list of reasons that it can be caused by diet. And I didn't want to go out like that. My blood pressure, we were sitting at uh, Texas Roadhouse of all places one night and I wear an Apple watch uh, and I was just sitting there doing nothing just like I am now. I'm sitting here, we're talking to family, we're enjoying a meal together. And my watch alerts me that I have a heart rate over 140 beats per minute. And I'm doing nothing. I'm sitting there doing nothing. Wow. That's scary. I hadn't been, yeah, I hadn't been out walking. I wasn't out doing anything. I was sitting down doing nothing. And then it got worse. It, it went up to about 160 and it wouldn't stop. And I told my mom and I told my wife, they're with me. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I was like, I don't feel bad, but I do feel kind of like just kind of out of breath. And like, I can't catch my breath and I don't feel good. So I ended up going home. I got some rest. It went back down. I ended up going to the doctor, find out that my blood pressure is just absolutely through the roof, like 
140s over 100s roughly. Um, sometimes it would spike to even higher. Um, my blood sugar, as I told you before, my, my fasting sugar was 247. Yep. Um, which was just through the roof with an A1C of 10.7. Um, all my blood levels were just way off. Uh, liver enzymes were through the roof. Um, every every blood marker that you can think of that has to do with insulin resistance and fat deposits, all those were just bad. Cholesterol was yeah. terrible. You had it, right. Yeah, bad. And uh, so that's whenever June 15th, I decided to make the change. Um, like I told Corey yesterday, I have done lots of damage to my body. I've been sober from drugs since 2007. I've been sober from alcohol since 2017. And, um, so I've done plenty of damage to my body as is, but I never thought that food was going to be the worst addiction that I ever dealt with. Um, right. It, it, that's actually, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up actually, because, um, Alcohol addiction and drug addiction are considered, you know, they're like not really socially acceptable, right? Yeah. They're, you know, alcohol addiction to a certain extent kind of is, and you can kind of get out of, get out of jail for free card with most people. But um, food addiction just kind of like flies right under the radar. And like, even if people admit that they're addicted to specific types of foods, like you don't really get like, I don't know, that much criticism for it, or you don't get people reaching out to you to basically be like, hey, can I please help you? Because food addiction is a real thing. But it sounds to me like you recognize that, you know, food addiction, getting over your food addiction tendencies, correct me if I'm wrong, is harder perhaps than alcohol or drug addiction? Way harder. Okay, Absolutely. So harder. Why? Explain why. Um, both alcohol and drugs. I, uh, I, again, I gave them both up cold kale. Like literally everything that I've given up over life. Like I, I used to smoke cigarettes. I was driving down the interstate one day in a semi actually. And, um, and I literally just bought a pack and I lit one up and it just wasn't right anymore. And I literally threw the whole pack out the window, never picked them up again to this day. Haven't picked them up again. And, um, also in cold kale, I see that at the bottom. That's awesome. This, this Corey's, uh, term here is going to be a new coined phrase, I think. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, uh, so, but, food like you said it's drugs and out drugs really is something that's taboo you know we we don't go around like you know hey you want to come over and hang out let's do some drugs together you know but right, you definitely right, right. but you definitely call your friends hey y'all come over we're gonna have pizza and watch a movie totally and it's totally and it's totally okay right but that cheese acts on your system just like drugs do because the casomorphins in it. it it's not as strong but over time it is for sure, over, over time, time it's stronger. Builds up in her body, you know, I was sure. getting to where you, you you could ask my wife. It was a little insane. Like, I would literally get a baking sheet and put like eight pieces of toast on it, and put about a cup of grated cheese on top of each piece, put it in the oven, melt it down, and eat it in one sitting. Wow! And like that would be my dinner, like like eight yeah. cups of cheese on eight pieces of bread. <laughs> Right. Yeah, was, maybe you can show some of those before and after photos to show like the dramatic change of how like that food resolved on you looking one way and now your new diet looks uh, result on you looking completely like a completely different yeah, person. It's absolutely crazy to see the, the difference in the before and the after. I, um, I never, I guess I never really realized where I was at versus where I could be until, you know, I made those pictures just, a couple weeks ago um mm -hmm. and and to look at it now yeah there it is to look at it now i'm just like wow that's just crazy like yeah. that that was me <laughs> <laughs> and i don't even recognize that guy anymore yeah um, yeah it's a massive difference huge difference and, so yeah. and steven so you start so june 15th is when you made the commitment to change and we have a question that came in that says how long did it take you to get off the medications so June 15th was the day that I said no more. And I went plant-based, completely plant-based. I mean, no animal product whatsoever at all. Um, at that point, I didn't know what nutritional diversity was or plant diversity was. Um, and so I'm, let's see here. I, I can tell you right now how many. I think it's been around uh, 
115 days or so since June 15th, something like 120 days. So call it basically four months. Yeah. And I'm at no medication as of last week. So a little over a hundred days. As of last week. Oh, so this is brand, yeah. brand new. Congratulations, yeah. man. That's, that's a big deal. That's a real big deal. Yeah. I, um, I had lab scheduled again for February because that was just, we we're going to go three months and then go six months because I told my clinical pharmacist that, um, you know, Hey, look, I'm going plant-based. This is what's happening. My goal is to get off all my medications. And usually a doctor is going to tell you like, no, you can't get off medications. And she was actually really cool about it. She was like, Hey, if that's what you want to do, let's do it. And, um, and slowly but surely, uh, within a week I had to come off the low sardine. The very first week I, I went plant-based, I had to come off the low sardine because my blood pressure normalized in seven days, um, completely normalized, like 120s over 70s. That's really fast, actually. That's very fast. And so because I was taking that low sartan, I would get orthostatic hypotension. So for those that don't know, like whenever you get up out of a chair, you get up out of bed or you bend over to fix something up and you get back up, all that blood rushes from your head and rushes back down. And it kind of knocks your equilibrium off and gets you dizzy. That's what orthostatic hypotension is. It's a it's a, a type of low blood pressure. And I told my doctor about that or the clinical pharmacist. And she's like, well, let's trial you off of it and see how you do. And to this day, I don't have high blood pressure anymore. Wow. Uh, and then the next one was the, let's see, I was on, oh, yeah, the Receivastatin. had my three months uh, at my new labs my cholesterol was in the 90s from the 200s um, at three months. At three months. And, wow, that's a rapid transition yeah. as well. That's huge. And so she automatically took me off the receivostatin right then and there. And um, then my next big goal was to, well, by that, by this point, bless you, by this point, I had already come off of all my potassium that I was taking because I was intaking a lot of leafy greens by this point. Like, I mean, like tons, because that's the cool thing about plants is people don't realize, like, you get to eat all you want. Like, you're not limited. You don't have to count calories. You don't have to sit there and be like, I need this serving of this and this serving of this and this serving of this. Like, you just eat until you're happy. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's what I started doing. And literally all those knots in my legs dissolved. They just went away completely. So I came off all the potassium. Um, I do still take a vitamin D, a vitamin B12, and a vitamin C. I take all three of those every day, and I will forever because everybody should. Um, but then the metformin, I was waiting for my next labs, which are in February. And she had agreed, you know, let's stay on the metformin just to be on the safe side, see how you're doing. And when we get your next set of labs, if they look okay, we'll try you off of it and see how you do. Well, she calls me back and like as a type two diabetic, you know, you probably don't have to check your blood sugar as much as I do. I check my blood sugar three to four times a day and not necessarily because I feel like I need to, but I do it for research purposes because there's going to be people like people on here that are asking me questions. And if I watch my blood sugar enough times a day, I'll be able to answer those questions. And so, like, I was checking it postprandial both my meals of the day because um, I did start doing the intermittent fasting, but that's we'll get into that in a minute. But, um, you know, so I was checking it postprandial after both my meals. Like, I just checked it. Um, I wouldn't say it's bad. Like, I had, I had some tater tots for a, uh, for a breakfast this morning because I just really, really needed something with some dense carbs because I drove all night from Montgomery down to Florida, then from Florida to Jacksonville and from Jacksonville back to where I'm at now. And so like, I was tired. <laughs> and so I was like, I just need something that's going to pack a punch really quick and give me some energy to push through. And, uh, and so, and I was like, well, I wonder what my blood sugar is going to be. And my, my hour and a half blood sugar is 120. And so that's just, my blood sugar would never used to do that. It would be like 400. It'd be like yeah. something stupid, you know? Um, and so she decided since my blood sugars are doing so well and she knows that I'm following it, like I've got all this stuff charted out and everything and, and I'm able to give her all the answers that she asked for and everything. She's like, well, let's go ahead and try you off of it and see how you do. And she was like, it's okay if you see your blood sugars kind of go up for a little bit, just kind of adjust to not having that medication there as a helper. 
So she's like, expect that to happen, but it'll come back down or it should come back down. Well, it never went up. It stayed down. Um, and so for the first time, I'm actually starting to see fasting blood sugars under 100 now um, in just over 100 days. That's a, that's a really big deal. I mean, the, the, the magnitude of the changes that you're talking about here are very important. I mean, think about it. Your fasting glucose used to be 247, and now you are sub 100, which means that your fasting glucose has dropped by approximately 150 points. That's a big deal. In addition to that, your A1C used to be 10.7. What is your most recent A1C value now? Uh, the the recent, most recent one is the one I told you about was 6.4. 6.4. Uh, so that's a four-point drop. I kind of wish that I could go back and get it done like now, not February. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive that it's got to be lower by now. But um, No, there's no doubt that it's going to be lower now. Let's just, yeah. let's just say that like the, the worst case scenario is that your A1C dropped by slightly over 4%. That's a very big A1C drop. And your body weight went from 300 pounds to how much do you weigh right now? Um, I am in the uh, 196, 197 inch range. Okay. So you lost a hundred pounds on average with uh, you know, a plus or minus a few pounds. So uh, these numbers are extremely large. These numbers are really large. And um, what I want people to understand is what you said earlier, which is that, you know, number one, you don't have to be, Maybe you didn't say this, but you don't have to be perfect in order to make this process work for you. You really don't. It's not about, you know, being a, uh, a model of perfection and having to go cold kale right off the bat. You just chose that that's what you wanted to do. And you saw dramatic results as a result of that. Right. And, well, and, go and ahead. I don't, I don't want people to just to think that I absolutely just went for perfection from day one. Cause I definitely didn't. Um, People that start watching the Mastering Diabetes videos, people that start reading the book, people that start from step one, just start eating better. You know, I've had so many people uh, start asking me for advice on, on what are you doing? How are you doing it? You know, we see the changes. It's obvious. We, we want to know what you're doing. And they're like, you know, I just don't know that I could just do all this and, and just flip overnight. And I'm like, to be honest with you, I didn't really flip overnight. I made the decision overnight that I was going to go plant-based and I did, but that's literally just step one. You know, the way that y'all modeled the book is perfect because it starts with eating right. It doesn't start with, you need to go buy a bike and start riding down the street. It just starts with eating right. And that's all I did. You know, I didn't, I didn't start doing any kind of exercise until 90 days in, 90 days in. And I had already lost a ton of weight just at 90 days in, just from eating right. I didn't start using chronometer until 90 days in and learning what my nutrient levels were so that I could start learning what plant diversity means so that I can learn what nutrition, nutrient intake means, you know. Um, I didn't start intermittent fasting until you told me on that live that day you know, hey, start intermittent fasting. And believe it or not, what's really, really crazy, I didn't get the chance to tell you on that live, is that day that you told me to start doing intermittent fasting, I was, I was, I bought the audio book because I, you know, as a driver, I don't have time to just stop and read. Right. And obviously I can't read while I'm driving. And, uh, and so I bought the audio book and I just listened to it while I'm going down the road. Well, the, that very day, like literally after that live was over, I turned my book back on because the live was off. So I turned my book back on. The next chapter, bro, intermittent fasting. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> chapter 13. I love it. I love and, it. Uh, and so, I, and, and because I was kind of struggling, because I was kind of still stuck in that um, around 208 to 210 range. And I, I felt like I'd been there forever. Like, I felt like I just couldn't break it. I, I don't know why. Like, I want to get under 200 so bad. And intermittent fasting, that was the next step. I drop below 200 pounds intermittent fasting. My next seg my next step is to really start hitting exercising because now I've got the energy to do it. I just got to start doing it. And, and like, I'm, I'm here to tell you, like, I'm still not exercising a whole lot because my work has been so ridiculously busy. It has been crazy. I, I do a little bit here and there. Like when I'm at a hotel, I might go hit the bike or something like that, or, 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 or maybe do some push ups here and there, but you know, eating right is where it starts. Um, and, and I've had people that, that ask me, one of the biggest questions they ask me is, is what's the first thing that you give up? 
Like what if 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 I was to change one meal a day, what would you tell me to change? And I tell them stop dairy. And like so so you're not gonna tell me stop meat right off the bat. I'm like actually no, I'm gonna tell you stop dairy, because dairy does so much unbelievable damage. Because once you stop that, your body's gonna start repairing itself, and it's gonna want to stop meat anyway. Right. And it, right, it's right. just gonna snowball. And, Biggest bang um, for your buck. Yep. Yeah, literally, you know, so nobody's perfect and you don't have to be perfect. Don't expect to be perfect. You know, I'm not going to lie. I go down to the store and get me a vegan chocolate bar every now and again. I like chocolate. I'm going to tell you, I like chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. For sure. Yeah. And and I think that's actually like part of the power of this process is that a lot of people have this perception, I believe, which is like, oh, you know, this seems too hard. This seems too challenging. This seems too overwhelming. I can't do this. Therefore, I'm going to do nothing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Time out, time out, time out. We've set the direction. We've set the goalposts. It's like, okay, maybe you're here and we want you to get to this point right here where you're eating a predominantly plant-based diet. You're exercising, you know, 30 minutes a day for six days a week and you're performing intermittent fasting if that's part of your regimen and you want to continue to lose weight. But that's a lot of stuff to do, right? You don't have to get from here to there overnight. You don't have to get from here to there over the course of even like three months or six months. If it takes you a year, I don't even care. It doesn't matter because there's no race, right? And so I think what, you've, what you're have what helping people understand here is that, number one, there's no such thing as perfection. Don't even try to be perfect. It's ridiculous. Like, I'm not even perfect. Robbie's not perfect. Who cares? It's not about perfection. It's just a question of orienting yourself in the right direction and then starting to move in that direction. And then over the course of time, you can add one more habit. You can add one more habit. You can subtract an old habit. You can replace it with a new habit. And then before you know it, all of a sudden, you're like, holy crap. My fasting glucose just dropped by 20 points, 40 points, 100 points. I just lost 30 pounds. I didn't even know that was possible, right? That's the way to make it work. And, it, and it's so true because the results are fast. I think every single person that starts on this journey, especially start people that start listening to y'all and Dr. Barnard and Dr. Will Bolshewitz and, and, and Dr. S. Esteen and all these amazing people that are um, helping this healthy movement move forward um that's their first question that was my first question i came on y'all's live and i asked that i was i I remember the day i was sitting in my shop working on sanding down some power boxes and y'all were in the live feed and that was one of my questions i remember because you're you're like no you're not being impatient you want to see results and uh and right i I remember like yeah Yeah. and so three months into it that's right that is what people that's their first question they always ask is how soon will i see results we're, we are humans as humans, we are result oriented. That's what we want is results. We, we, people strive and strive and strive for results. If, if I say, Cyrus, I need you to come do X, Y, Z job. I'm going to pay you a hundred dollars to do X, Y, Z job. I expect you to do that job. You know, I expect to see results. And that's just like, if somebody is buying a book or getting into a program or getting a coach to help them out, or doing whatever they do, they want to see results. And this is the first time in my life I've done all of them. I've read the books. I've read the studies. I've read, you know, I've gotten on PubMed. I've read the research studies. I've read the scholarly articles that are written by doctors that are way smarter than I ever dreamed of being. And they didn't work. And this is something that in a matter of days, I was getting off meds that I, ne- that I thought I'd be on for the rest of my life. You know, I'm seeing results, yeah. you know, it's like weird results. Like um, my eyesight, that was one of my worries when I went to the doctor. I was going to talk to him about my eyesight. I was, I was getting a little fuzzy off in the, in, the, in the distance and my eyesight corrected itself. I went to the eye doctor and by the time that I could get into that, because I, I use the VA for healthcare, and uh, And so with the VA, like if you get an appointment, it's usually pretty far out. So by the time that I got to see my eye doctor, it was like two months into being plant-based. And he was like, so what's wrong with your eyes? It was like, there's zero signs of diabetes in your eyes. There's zero signs of cataracts in your eyes. Your vision is like 2020. And the problem, the only problem you have is that your, your vision is so good that it's trying to correct itself to better than 2020. So we need, he was like, if you really need anything, you need a prescription to kind of dumb your eyes down a little bit <laughs> to, to, to keep them from overworking your brain. <laughs> right. We need a, we need a prescription to get your eyes fuzzier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. 
And, uh, and so that just kind of caught me up because it's, it's one of those things like I didn't get into this to get eyesight better. You know, that, that's not why I started going plant-based because my right. eyes, it just was a side effect, a, a good one, but, but a, a side effect nonetheless. Um, Correct. And, and, and there's been many of those, you know, I'm getting to where I'm at to buy a new wardrobe because at my largest, I was a size 44 and now I'm down to size 34. Um, um, 44 to 34. That's a massive yeah. change as well. It's funny when you talk about eyesight, actually, if we, fa- if we rewind the clock back to 2003, when I was first diagnosed 2002, uh, it was the first week of my diagnosis after I had gone to the hospital, gotten diagnosed with type one diabetes. I came back and I was supposed to like resume my normal life as if nothing had happened. And I had a final a couple days later, cause I was in college as my senior year. And I went to the final and I was like sitting in my normal position inside of the auditorium, which is like, I don't know, maybe two thirds of the way back or so. And uh, there was a bunch of stuff written on the board, like instructions on, you know, something related to the actual exam. And I was sitting there taking the exam and I looked up at the board and I was like, <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Like, I can't even see this. Like, and, and, I, and I, all of a sudden I was like, what the hell is going on? I'm 22 years old. And I am having vision problems. Are you kidding me? Right. And it was like, it hit me to my core. And I was like, okay, none of this. I refuse to live my life this way, having one problem after another, after another, after another. And it's like, it can be pretty scary not knowing what the next problem is going to be, but just knowing that there's going to be more and more and more into the future. Terrible feeling. So I don't get where you're coming from. Absolutely. Yeah. Whenever my clinical pharmacist, because with the VA, which I mean, with, with most doctors now, you can go in and see your labs online before you even talk to your doctor. And, um, and that's how it is with the VA. Like, so like I was literally like monitoring that website, like, you know, every second of every day, like I probably checked that thing 30 times a day. Like if they released my labs yet, if they released my labs yet, right. Like, finally, finally they released my labs. Like I almost cried. Like I was like, I was like, I just dropped my A1C by what? Hmm. Like it's only been at, at that point, technically I had only been plant-based for two months, technically, because my daughter's appointment for my last labs was in May and it was like May 14th or May 15th. I didn't go plant-based till June 15th. And then my labs were like August 16th, I think. So technically those labs were only from two months of being plant-based. Like I, I remember my last meal. My last meal on on the night of June fifteenth was a horrible uh, hamburger from Hardee's, and I remember telling my wife like it was it was trash, it was garbage, and um, and I, I don't know if that like had if that helped at all, but like I like to think that it does, <laughs> but um, uh, nonetheless, you know, seeing those changes so rapidly, so fast, and then seeing all these other little side changes that you don't expect. Um, you know, improved blood flow um, in different parts of your body. Um, you know, a lot of that talk is taboo for a lot of guys because they don't realize that erectile dysfunction is literally a signature cause from insulin resistance. It's Correct. literally 100% insulin resistance. And you don't realize how, how much it will fix things, not to mention mentally, because that is mentally taxing on the, on the male body. And then not to mention, once we start getting all these fat deposits out of our brain as well, because people don't realize fat goes into your brain. It's in your bloodstream. Blood goes to your brain. And it does the same thing. It, it affects your mental acuity. And, uh, and that's other things that I, you know, there's certain things like my, my wife, I guarantee whenever she hears me say this, um, I have my phone right here with me and I have it on my text message with her. Um, but like, there's certain things that I can remember, but apparently nothing that she tells me, but everything else I can remember. But, uh, but she thinks on me about that all the time. She's like, no, you still don't remember. And she's right. There's a lot of stuff. Like if I didn't have her, I'd be like totally 100% lost because right. she, she remembers 99% of everything. And I remember the other 1%, but I act like my 1% is the 99. Right. <laughs> but, she remembers 99% of the things that you forget. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, 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 there, there it is right there. Yeah, there oh, we yeah. go. <laughs> I love the it. dead face. 
That's too funny. So, so this is great. Okay, we got a bunch of questions that have come in over the course of time. So you, you're a popular guy, and I think there's a lot of people that, that want to ask you questions or just want to ask questions about this sort of method overall. So maybe let's start at the top here. We got Deborah. Uh, she basically said, started your diet two weeks ago and brought my fasting blood sugar down by 70 points. I've had type 2 diabetes for 25 years, and my latest A1C was 12.2. Thank you for saving my life. Uh, Deborah, very glad to hear that. It looks like you and uh, Stephen can be best friends here. Uh, very, very, very glad to hear that. Renee says, dove in plant-based, a whole food, and, the, and no oils the other day after I was diagnosed, down to an A1C of five and down 85 pounds in eight months. That's a big deal. 85 pounds in eight months. Congratulations, Renee. I'm really glad to hear this. Um, see, uh, Lynette saying, well, you don't need alcohol or drugs for the most part to live, but you have, you have to eat. Hence a very hard addiction to deal with. Okay. So Lynette, I think you're hitting it on the head here, right? Food is required and it's a combination of you got to do, you have to do it on a daily basis, whatever, on a somewhat daily basis. And yet it's socially acceptable and people don't really like come to your rescue or try and point out the fact that like maybe you do have a problem and that just kind of perpetuates an already bad situation. Uh, so go ahead. Can I, can I, can I come in on that real quick? Please. Um, so a lot of people see um, the need to eat and that's one of the good things about this is we don't realize just how much is really available at our fingertips to eat until you start getting into it. Um, like, you know, I might start the day out, you know, cause I don't eat my first uh, meal until 1130 of the day. Um, and then I eat my last meal no later than seven o'clock at night. Um, so that, that's my window every day. It's seven and a half hours. And, um, but like my first meal, if I'm at my shop, which is really, really cool. I got to tell this story really quick. Do it. Um, at our shop, whenever you're at our shop, if we're working, we have like nine to 10 guys at our shop. My boss's wife actually makes our lunch literally every day of the week from scratch. We go to, we go up to their house because they live where the shop is. We have a, a shop on 40 acres where my boss lives. We go up to his house. We all go in the kitchen, sit down at the table together. And she literally makes us a meal from scratch every single day of the week that we're there every day. Like, and I'm not talking about like small, like, like there'll be a salad. There'll be sides, there'll be an entree, and it'll be a dessert, like, every day. And so one of our guys, like, he doesn't eat pork. So she always makes him something special that doesn't have pork, if, if you know, unless, like, you know, she's making a beef dish for the rest of the guys or whatever. He can eat that. But, like, if it's a day that there's a pork dish, she makes him something special. Well, I went plant-based, and, like, she just went and started making me plant-based stuff. Like, she's dove in and started making me stuff with tofu. Um, she makes me a lot of okra and tomatoes, which is absolutely awesome because I love it. Um, and then she, um, you know, she, she started like making a big thing of mashed potatoes that everybody eats, but before everybody else comes in, she'd be like, Hey, this has got oat milk in it, but don't tell nobody, you know, <laughs> like, and like, but like everybody like eat it and nobody knows the difference, you know? So, you know, we don't have to be afraid to eat like this. You know, you don't realize, you know, if, if there's a lot of meals that I can make you that you really wouldn't know the difference, you know, I can make you some tofu tacos that would just blow your absolute mind. And you totally. literally never know the difference, but you'd be healthier for the better. Sorry, something happened to my sound here. Keep keep going, reading these comments, and it'll pop back in a second. Okay, so uh, we have Station two four seven three six five saying didn't go cold turkey, but today is day four. That's amazing. All right, uh, I started my by going vegan a few months ago, but after educating myself, went cold kale, healthy overnight. Fresh fruits, vegetables, steamed veggies, and rice, buckwheat, potato, or quinoa for dinner. That's amazing. Keeping it simple. I like it. Love that you guys always tell us you're not the food police. It mentally helps me not to feel bad about my choices on a daily basis. Yeah, it's all about being realistic. I love Stephen sharing, you know, your experience. Hey, yeah, I want chocolate. So, like, you know, like it's not about being perfect. It's about doing what you do over the, you know, the large period of time, like overall. And the small things here, there aren't going to make a big difference. So that's great. All right. Almost no pills. I was started on 2000 milligrams of metformin. And six months later, I'm now on 1000 metformin. I plan to be off meds in the next six months. This method works big time. I was slow to convert to this method at first as I figured out foods again, as I ditched garbage, fast foods, laugh out loud, A1C 10, 
in January and now 5.76 months later. That's fantastic, Francis. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Everyone in this group is so inspiring. I'm going to miss this group so much when my coaching is done. Dana, maybe continue with coaching. <laughs> Just stay with the community. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what else came in here. There was a question somebody asked about, is it too late to join the quick start? So I think they're asking about our six week challenge. If you want to join the six week challenge, just go to masteringdiabetes.org slash start and you can get on the phone and we'll make sure it's a good fit for you. Make sure you get aligned with the right coach, with the right group at the right time of day. So definitely do that. Somebody also asked a question about where they could find the audiobook. That's available anywhere you listen to audiobooks, Audible, Google Play. You can grab the audiobook. And the audiobook was very fun because we added some extra material that wasn't actually in the printed book because the printed book was already printed and we couldn't add stuff at that point. But we could when we did the audio recording. We had a special summary at the beginning of each chapter to talk about our thought process in writing the chapter. So even if you have the hardcover, it's a great idea to get the audiobook as well for some extra information. And you can listen to it while you're exercising, while you're doing dishes, while you're doing laundry. It's very convenient. Well, Sorry. It kind of draws you in too. What's that, Stephen? So whenever you listen to the audiobook, it kind of draws you in because y'all y'all really y'all break it down to where it makes sense. Mm, yeah. And 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 you'll start getting involved. And by by the time you're like two or three paragraphs into a chapter, like you're just like, yep, this is what I'm listening to. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. That's awesome. Very cool of you. Cool. Okay. Uh, so in terms of time, we probably just got a couple more minutes here. Um, so Juanita says the audiobook is definitely amazing. Great. Uh, Bird of Hermes said, I got the audiobook, guys. Awesome. Glad to hear that. So uh, the paperback, what Corey had told you guys is that the paperback of the book is coming out on October 18th. So that's basically 11 days from now. So right now you can pre-order that book and uh, get your hands on it. If you haven't already picked up a copy of the Master Diabetes book, we highly recommend it. You can get either the, the hardback, the hardcover, the paperback, or the Kindle version, or the audiobook. It's up to you, whichever one you'd like, whatever format works best for you. Just go to masterydiabetes.org slash book. And here's the deal. You can just take the information in that book and you can do exactly what Stephen did. That's it. Just literally apply the information. It's just that simple. Or if you feel like you want you need a little bit more guidance, a little bit more information and actually have an accountability coach to basically keep you oriented on the, on the right path, um, join the coaching program or join the challenge like Robbie was talking about. Go to masteringdiabetes.org slash start and you can sign up to speak with somebody today to see if you're a good fit. If we think you're a good fit and if you have the right characteristics, then we can get you into the program and we can really help you change your life today. Uh, Steven, what other final words do you have to, you know, give people some guidance here? Um, actually on the guidance issue, um, I totally recommend the coaching program simply because, you know, I, I personally, I, I'll be honest, I didn't do the coaching program. I just had lots and lots of time behind the wheel listening to audiobooks, And I've probably listened to every single video that Matching Diabetes has ever put out. <laughs> and, um, that between that and Dr. Like again, Dr. Neil Barnard, Dr. Bolshewitz, I actually just finished Dr. Neil Bolshewitz's book as well. Um, you know, but I also, I have a biology background. I have an anatomy and physiology background. So I kind of had a leg up, so to speak. So I knew how the human body works. I know how nutrients work. Um, I used to be into weightlifting really big. So I, I already had a lot of knowledge on nutrients and, and how they work and micro versus macros and et cetera, et cetera. Um, the problem is people just feel really overwhelmed by a lot of it and they feel like they, they can't make sense of all the information. So therefore they just kind of give up. Um, and that's where it helps to have a coach because they're not going to expect you to know a million things on day one. You know, they, they'll help you walk you through the process and, and help it to where it makes sense because that, that, that's what I had to have. I just, it took me time, you know, I'm a hundred and what we said, 120 days in and you know, there's still stuff where I'll listen to a live or I'll read a part of the book again or whatever. And all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, I get that now, you know, and I just right. add that to, now I just add that to my kit, add it to my kit, you know, so just keep on adding stuff to your kid. Um, and don't, don't give up because it, it works. It, I'm not, you know, they didn't ask me on here to sell you on something. They didn't pay me to do this. This is, 
I just got results and I feel better than I've ever felt. I'm living better than I've ever lived. I'm happier than I've ever been. Um, I just want to see no more heart attacks, no more heart disease, no more diabetes. I want to see type one diabetics be completely and totally. It's my death. Hey, hey, living with diabetes. Somebody asked me why was I eating earlier? Do you eat all day? Well, I was eating because my blood glucose was going down and now you got the Dexcom beeping at you. But it's such a life. Eat more mangoes. Ah, uh, well, you know, <laughs> eat some more dates. 71. It's okay. I'll survive. Um, but but Steve, Steve, your story is very inspiring, man. Like in four months, what you've accomplished in four months. And I think we're going to have to have you back on down the road, check in on your Absolutely. future progress. But it's really incredible. Kudos to you. Yeah, February, I have my lab updates. So um, maybe February, I can shoot y'all an email. And after I get my lab results back and uh, see what's up. Let's do it. For sure. That'd be, that'd be great, actually. I, I feel like we should, shouldn't wait till February. That's like what? six five months from now uh the sneak preak for all of you guys here um you are going to be the first people to hear about this the the blood sugar revolution summit our annual summit is starting in less than a month check your emails you're going to be uh fine you're going to be the first people to be able to register and be able to take advantage of this opportunity so if you want to Learn more information from the world expert speakers. We got 22 world expert speakers. And in my opinion, the, the interviews keep getting better and better and better. So if you want more information, if you really want to learn about your gut, your brain, your liver, your kidneys, uh, practical tips to make this work, weight loss, heart disease, fatty liver disease, we'll talk about everything and really teach you how you can reverse insulin resistance and all of the satellite complications that come along with it and get the same results, if not better than Steven. Maybe we should start a results competition here and have a leaderboard <laughs> and, and, and really drive this point home. But for the, you know, if you're interested in joining the summit, just check your email. If you're not on our email list, go to masteringdiabetes.org, join our email list, and you can learn all about it and uh, register and participate. And it's 100% free, and I want to you know, give you guys all the knowledge and tools that you, you can have at your disposal to take full control of your lifestyle in the exact same way that Steven has done. Steven, you're the man. Thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you guys and uh, everything y'all do. For sure. Remember, this is, this is the tip of the iceberg. Things are going to continue to get better, and I cannot wait to see just how much stuff continues to change over the course of the next five months and beyond. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to do my best to get lean like y'all. I'm probably keep keep as much of this as I can, but <laughs> <laughs> all right, we can have a lean off at that point then too. <laughs> That's it. Cool. Awesome. Uh, by the way, for in the comments, do, do us a favor. Can you give uh, can you give Stephen a giant high five? Give him some congratulations. Give him some love because the the work that he's put in has been truly tremendous. And uh, I know he's enjoying the process, but he really is working hard. And I know you guys are huge fans, so let him know how much you appreciate him. And, uh, you know, give him, give him some high fives. Yeah. Some virtual high fives. <laughs> um, Appreciate everybody. Yeah. Cool. You rock. Thanks again, Stephen. All right. See you soon. See y'all.